how do astronomers measure vast distances? It's not like they could use a tape measure. Instead, astronomers use a ladder. It's a combination of different methods to measure the distances to celestial objects. I'm Michelle Cullen, and I teach astronomy at Prince William Sound College in beautiful Valdez, Alaska. Join me today as we climb the cosmic distance ladder to the stars. Distances to objects in our solar system, to the sun and the moon, and the planets were cleverly worked out by the ancients using techniques of solar eclipses, observations of the transit of Venus, and using ground telescopes. They were surprisingly accurate, but measurements today are ultra precise. We can use radar, laser, and satellite telescopes to help measure distances it's possible to bounce a laser beam off of the moon and then we can use that time with the speed of light to measure the absolute distance. Similarly, radar is used to measure distances to planets and other objects in our solar system. But it's not practical to measure the distance to stars in this way. They're just too far away. Parallax it's the next step in the cosmic ladder. It's a type of triangulation, and it's used to measure the distances to stars up to 100 parsecs away. You can see how parallax works by holding up your thumb at arm's length and blinking. If you blink your eye and hold your thumb still, it appears to move back and forth. Astronomers blink their telescopes. In a similar way, what they do is they'll take a photo of a nearby star from one point in time and then they'll wait until the earth travels to the other side of the sun six months later and take another picture. They can compare what the star has done and how it's appeared to shift against the background of the stars. By measuring how much it shifted they can measure an angle called the parallax angle. If you know the parallax angle and you know the distance to the sun, then you can use trig to figure out the distance to that nearby star. It turns out that the parallax angle is very small. It's less than one arc second. What is an arc second, you say? Well, it's a, I'll, I'll give you a hint, 360 degrees in a compass. One degree can be broken down into 60 seconds. And then that six in each second can be broken down into 60 arc seconds. So one arc second is one 3,600th of a second. That's really small. It's the size of a quarter as seen from five kilometers away. But with really good telescopes and especially ones in space, astronomers can measure those parallax angles. Gaia Orbital Satellite is one such satellite that takes parallax measurements. It has surveyed over a billion objects from very faint magnitude and given us extremely small parallax angles. Because of this, we know the distance to billions of stars in our local area of our Milky Way galaxy. Now, even a billion sounds like a lot, but that's only 1% of the stars in our galaxy that we know the distance through parallax. So parallax breaks down after a certain distance. What do we use next? We climb the ladder to use standard candles. All you need to measure the distance of a faraway celestial object, even in another galaxy, would be the absolute luminosity of the star. How do we know the true luminosity, even in another galaxy? Well, that's a good question. Because remember, light sources dim as they come towards you. They use the inverse square law, one over the distance squared. So the apparent magnitude is what we see. How do we know the absolute magnitude? A brilliant woman astronomer, Henry Etta Swan Levitt, in the 1900s figured out that idea of the very first standard candle. 
She was working underpaid, not even allowed to use a telescope, just given thousands of photographic plates to analyze as a human computer. She focused on a special star, the Cepheid variable star, located in the Magellanic clouds. These are really bright stars and they're interesting because they're variable. Their brightness fluctuates or pulses over time. She plotted all her Cepheid variables against days and their luminosity and magnitude, and a wonderful relationship was revealed. She found that the brighter the Cepheid variable, the longer the period. A variable star that cycled in just a day was much less luminous than a star that took over a month to take its phase. She published a paper on the first standard candle that used the period luminosity relationship. And the reason why her studies worked and she was able to find this relationship is actually brilliant. She studied the stars in the Magellanic clouds. They're like a star cluster. There's a lot of stars. They're actually a nearby dwarf galaxy. And when she measured them, she could assume, or we do assume now, that the distance is all the same. How do we know the distance of all these stars is the same? Well, just think about uh, looking at houses in the neighborhoods all over the city of Anchorage and looking at the distance of those houses to of San Diego. Do those um, few blocks between the houses make a difference? No. They don't. So it's the same way with the Cepheid variables. They're all apparently the same distance. Later astronomers were able to use actual numbers and distances to calculate and calibrate how, what the absolute magnitude of her Cepheid variables were. She was able, they were able to use an overlapping method on the cosmic ladder to get those distances. And if you know the distance, you know the apparent brightness, the distance, you know the absolute magnitude. Now there are many types of standard candles today, including the rare Type 1a supernova. But the idea is the same. You know the absolute luminosity of the celestial object, you can figure out the distance. I hope you now have a greater appreciation for how standard candles help astronomers determine cosmic distances.